Hey everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Coffee Time with Mr. Yu. But today, we're not gonna have any coffee. So, I got an interesting episode here for all of you guys. It's a book review of this new title, which is called Applied Machine Learning Explainability Techniques, which is super fascinating because out of all my machine learning skill sets, the experience of investigating different machine learning techniques from the explainability perspective, it's actually the longest. Been doing that for the past few years, and me personally, I find this topic particularly interesting. So when I read this book title, I thought, hey, I can definitely do an episode to just talk a little bit about this to share my experience. So with that being said, let's get to a quick acknowledgement. Today's video, it's collaboration with Pack Publisher, and they sent me a copy of the book prior to the video. I read the book, I really enjoyed it. I gave an honest opinion of how I review the content of this material from my perspective. And in addition to the copy of the book, I've not really received any monetary incentive. So I hope that this video can provide some honest feedback for all of you guys who are interested in this field and also are trying to make a judgment whether you want to buy the book or not. So with that being said, let's get things started. So the author of this book is Aditya Bhattacharya. When I read his profile, I'm just super amazed that the amount of experience that he had when he wrote this book already shows me something extremely valuable in accounting. He's been in the field for seven plus years. He's been in Microsoft, West Pharma, and really it's a lot of industry experience. And on top of that, the stakeholders coming from different perspectives. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of West Pharma, it creates and manufactures the injectable packaging system in the United States. So you can imagine that if the system is not well built, the amount of risk at stake for their business model. So right off the bat, I do believe that this author comes from background that the machine not just need to be required to be accurate, to be precise, but really it's the explainability that matters. Because from what I'm seeing in industry, if this is a company that you come from, West Pharma, I do believe that this author definitely have seen some serious stuff where the explainability of the model supersedes the importance of the accuracy. So with that being said, right off the bat, I really appreciate this author contributing to the community and share their experience of what really is at stake. That's definitely something I'm looking for in a book title such as this one, which is a contributor and a source of the contributors. Now, having been in this field for a couple of years, I've actually read a couple of books in regards to explainability or interpretability of machine learning model. Most of them have their own doctrine and have their own philosophy. I think what this author is bringing on the table is he doesn't pick sides, right? And I think that could actually provide a very thorough and unbiased survey for this entire field, which the author laid it out in literally the first chapter. So right off the bat, I do believe that this author is not trying to sell a particular methodology, except that it's really about surveying the entire field. So me personally, I can see if I'm the beginner in this field, not am I interested in developing machine learning models for high accuracy, but also I want to produce explainability of the model. I want to explain to the stakeholders why the model is interesting. If that's where you're coming from, I think this first chapter definitely serves its purpose. So it talks about the trade-off between accuracy and complexity of the model. It talks about different perspectives of what people believe in, in explainability and interpretability, and so on and so forth. So based on where I'm coming from, I think the machine learning community definitely have a different definition, a different perspective in regards to the concept of explainability. Whereas, you know, if, if you're talking to someone from humanities perspective, or if you're talking to a philosopher, they will explain explainability from a different angle. So right off the bat, I think this first chapter also did a great job elaborating and serving different perspective of what people talk about when they referring to explainability. 
And then from that perspective, chapter two will lead you on and dive deeper, right? The author will take you on a journey of not just a particular methodology, but on a more intricate level, what are some of the type or some of the style of explainability that people use. There's example based, there's visualization based, there's saliency map based, and then there are probably also influence based, some sort of feature importance ranking, something like that. So out of this entire field, I think it is important for us to recognize all of them, right? And each one of them will of course be talking about explainability from each particular angle. And I think it is important to emphasize that this field, if you want to look at the model importance or the feature importance, you really need to come from what the stakeholder is standing at and what their assumptions are. And from there, you can probably come up with a more viable plan to explain the model. Some people are interested in models. Some people are interested in features. Some people are interested in what the features do. Some people are interested in how they work and interact with each other. So all of these things require different analysis. And the second chapter leading on to the rest of the book is essentially laying down the groundwork for people to understand how this works from different perspectives. And not only did the author provide theoretical components, there's also coding exercise along with them. So if you want a more hands-on experience, you can go to the coding component, reproduce some of the experiment, you can tweak things around and change it, play around with it, see what you get as a result. Which is something that I want to mention on a tangent, right? This book comes with great analysis of Python notebooks packed all together in a GitHub repo. You can really just go up online and you can download the notebooks and you can walk through those exercises. Now, of course, you can do that on your own time, but you can also do that along with the time when you read a book. Now, for me, I think I'm the kind of person who not only do I read a book, but I also want to play around with the Python code just to give myself an understanding of the mathematical model and how that played out in real world. So I really appreciate the fact that this book has that platform to provide us a list of Python notebooks in a GitHub repo. So that's definitely something I highly recommend. And then in terms of detail, a couple of important methodologies that I probably talked about in the previous videos are LIME, right? LIME is short for Local Interpretable Model for Explanation. It essentially look at the model and the prediction locally and trying to use its near neighborhood to come up with linear explanation. So it has its constraint, but it does get the job done. In addition, there's also Shapley value, which I do for my job, I do for my research. And of course, in this book, they talk about Shapley value, which is really interesting because it originates from game theory and all these famous methodology, Lime, Shap, this book did a great job talking about it. Now, of course, there's also things that the book covered that I did not know about. For example, there's this new methodology called testing with concept activation vector, TCVA, which is actually a new concept to me as well. So I'm happy that I'm learning something new. It turned out this methodology, TCVA, coming from Google AI. And this methodology goes beyond a feature importance or feature attribution one by one, right? they're talking about a cluster of features altogether. Like for example, we're talking about how important is the stripe of a tiger face when you're trying to identify if this picture has a tiger or not. So that's something interesting, right? Because in the picture, you can't just look at the pixel value, which is what the attribution is. So the pixel can be called a variable, can be called an attribute. Now, if you're ranking according to attribute, uh, that unfortunately is making things too sparse. and when you put the things together, it will be very difficult for human to digest. So it turned out that this methodology is able to do the job. And then in addition, this book also went in depth to talk about different dashboards, interactive platform, such as Daleks or Arena, something like that. So I found all these cool names very interesting. Daleks, if you don't know, is coming from Doctor Who. So I watched Doctor Who myself and I found that, hey, it's interesting to come across this reference in the machine learning textbook. So it's really interesting. And I just want to say this book is well written. It's super fun to read. Lots of callbacks, references to real world applications. 
So overall, I have very positive feedback for this book. If you're new to the field, if you want to get into data science, explainability, I think this book is definitely one of the books that can help you get into the field and can provide a wide range of knowledge for you to understand. And more importantly, if you're working in the industry, uh, this book can of course provide a lot of value for your team as well because it helps you to sell the model, right? It helps you to sell the model and market the model to the stakeholders that mm, perhaps they don't really have the technical background to understand, hey, what is a loss function? What is gradient descent? And these tools in explainability and in interpretability of the machine learning model can help you achieve that. And to explain really what the model is doing and why is accurate as it says so, right? So with that being said, hope you enjoyed this feedback. And if you like the video, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.